Being an NFL fan this time of year is exciting, but also stressful. Every training camp injury, every holdout, every random appendix surgery that comes out of nowhere, it can drive you to damn near insanity. Sensitive topic, but I bring up preseason fan jitters so I can bring you into the right mind state for this video. I want you to take that feeling, soak it in for a little minute. I mean, really hold it up, let feel the weight of it. And then I want you to imagine how much heavier it would be if instead of a fan, you were an actual NFL rookie heading into your first NFL training camp. The draft process is over with. The contracts are signed and the dawn of your new career is finally right in front of you. It seemed like just yesterday you was preparing for combine drills and mastering techniques that you probably won't ever use again. You went through interview after interview, some privately with teams, some publicly with the media, but whole time you understanding that every word you spoke could add or subtract millions to or from your pockets. Workout out the workout, you had to be at your best, impress the right people. Once that was over with, you landed with a team, celebrated, probably even shed a couple tears. Then you dried the mugs up and got right back to it. You wanted to peak at the perfect time, so you ramp up and ramp up and ramp up until finally you was ready, just in time for camp. And then suddenly you find out that you're actually gonna miss your entire rookie season. Damn. With the 2022 NFL season right around the corner, I took a quick little break from my old school stories and I've been really diving into a lot of current NFL news. I've been noticing some different trends and there's a lot of interesting things that I kinda wanna talk about. So today we're talking about three NFL rookies whose careers are getting off to an extremely rough start. But outside of just what happens on the field, these type of challenges are the building blocks of a great NFL story. So without further ado, let's check them out. Y'all already know what time it is, fellas. Kill the way. Okay, real quick before we jump in, a quick word from today's sponsor, Geology. So Geology is a non-time award-winning skincare company for men. They've been recognized in Men's Health, Esquire, got over 5,000 five-star reviews. Like, people really love the product. In a nutshell, Geology creates a simple and effective skincare routine customized just for you with ingredients that are proven to work and have been formulated for daily use. And I always like companies who heavily consider just who exactly their product is for. Here's what I mean by that. So I've been using this product for a little minute now. I had to test it out before I agreed to do this sponsorship. And what I really love about this product is how stupid easy it is and how fast the process is. So my wife was telling me, cause she's got amazing skin, right? I'm asking her what she uses. She showed me an oil wash, a foam wash, like three different moisturizers some type of mask and then some oils because you got to seal in the moisture i'm like you do this every day so i know i'll never be on her level but geology for me has been so damn simple that it's definitely improved my skincare routine i just wake up in the morning wash my face with the everyday face wash then hit one or two pumps of this here moisturizer moisturize my face go on about my day then at nighttime is nearly the same routine once again wash my face using the everyday face wash and this time i use the nighttime moisturizer daytime moisturizer and your nighttime moisturizer yellow for the sun dark blue for nighttime and i don't need 20 bottles of stuff in order to you know get a good face wash and some good moisturizer you know now if you got the dark circles under your eyes and you want to work on that they also have this nighttime eye cream so you only use this at night and if you do is one additional step that probably takes five seconds after you wash and moisturize your face you just take a couple of pumps of this and then you rub it in on that little sensitive skin right there underneath your eyes to help get rid of that puffiness and them dark circles, you know what I'm saying? So if you wanna make handsome a habit, click the link in the description, take the little 30 second quiz and you can start with the complete trial set, which is a $50 value. So head to geology.com, that's G-E-O-L-O-G-I-E.com and take their free skincare quiz to save up to 50% off on your 30 day trial. And even better, you can join the new Geology Galaxy community for daily tips, giveaways and more all at the geology discord shout out to geology for sponsoring today's video without further ado let's get it so the nfl draft is an event with high emotion but anytime you get a reaction this visceral out of a 22 year old man with the world at his feet it's usually pretty safe to say probably a little bit of a backstory there right david ajabo was born in nigeria 
moved to Scotland at seven years old, and for nearly the next decade grew up playing soccer and basketball. Somebody finally dragged his big ass out onto the football field when he was a junior in high school, and the rest, as they say, is history, right? For David Ajabo, he became a man pretty fast once he started playing football. But when he went to Michigan, he had to sit and watch cats like Quiddy Pay and Josh Uche, first and second round draft picks, not to mention another teammate, Aiden Hutchinson, who just went second overall. So Ajabo wasn't getting no PT early on, but he only knew how to play the game one way. And dude went so damn hard in practice, he won defensive scout team player of the year. And I always think little stuff like that tells you something about a player. Going hard enough in practice, to win this award despite knowing you wasn't gonna play. Just shows a level of commitment and relentlessness that I like to see. And when you mix those traits with the first round talent, that's when you really got some. So Ajabo spent 2019 not playing, 2020 mostly as a special teamer. Then he finally got his shot in 2021 and parlayed like four total seasons of football into a first round draft projection. He was expected to be at least a top 20 pick in the 2022 NFL Draft. Dude bodied the draft combine, but had one final hurdle, Michigan's Pro Day. Now, a lot of y'all should be at least somewhat familiar with this part of the story, but here's a quick recap. During his Pro Day workout, Ajabo went down with an injury. All in that one instant, Ajabo fell and his draft stock followed. Imagine what was going through dude's mind as he laid there on the ground in agony. This one guy who, while not in a hurry, seems to at least be going to his aid. I'm watching thinking, okay, he could at least show a little bit more urgency. But bro, when he get to the man, he step right past him, go pick up the damn ball and act like he don't even see the dude laying there. Like he can't hear the man in pain on the ground. He just saw this happen. But he picks up the ball and walks right back past him like a stone cold psychopath. So anyway, the injury causes David to slip out of the first round costing dude millions of dollars. But things don't go completely bad for him because he still ends up getting drafted pretty high in the second round. And he goes to a great landing spot for an edge rusher, landing with the Baltimore Ravens. So at least there's that. Back in May, the Ravens was still saying they expect dude to come back and play this year. And maybe he does, as these dudes seem to shake back incredibly fast these days, but not everybody does. We'll have to see how that plays out. But the thing is right now, he's not even signed yet holding out a training camp in an attempt to get the third year on his contract fully guaranteed. And you know, he's fighting hard for that third year because if he comes back and he's not the same or maybe it takes him a year to get back on his feet or God forbid he got injured again, having that extra year of security, I think everybody understands why that's a huge deal. But given Ajabo's specific set of circumstances, it's an even bigger deal. Everybody knows he lost millions at that pro day and he's looking to secure as much guaranteed money as possible like pretty much anybody would. And he actually does have a little bit to stand on when it comes to trying to get that third year guarantee as this is something that several fringe first rounders have been able to negotiate. So this year, the first five picks in the second round had the first three years of their contracts fully guaranteed. So I guess Ajabo's agent is arguing that he's of the same caliber and only failed due to the injury which isn't expected to affect him long term of course he would argue that and of course the ravens would argue well the risk is higher not to mention he's slotted right here and we're only going to guarantee the same amount of money of other players who were taken within the same range so maybe a better contract comparison for a job to shoot for or accept would be the player taking one spot ahead of him why well yeah because he was taking one spot ahead of him but also because they both kind of arrived at this point by way of extremely similar circumstances it's kind of crazy actually so the texans second second round pick john mechie the third has his first two years fully guaranteed and then a little over half of the third year and see like ajabo will miss his rookie season Bro, working your whole life to get to the NFL only to get hurt at your pro day, that feels like it might be about as bad as it gets. Until you see the story of John Mechie III. I mean, damn. Like Ajabo, Mechie is of Nigerian descent as his dad is Nigerian and his mom is Taiwanese. Also like Ajabo, this dude's lived all over the world, growing up in places like Ghana and Taiwan. But he gained his love of football from watching the CFL during his time in Canada. Now bro, I covered a whole bunch of players on this channel, I've done a whole bunch of stories, many stories, all type of stuff. And this might be the first time I have 
ever heard that like the cfl being the first pro league somebody fell in love with and then went on to be a top level prospect later on it's an extremely small detail that in the grand scheme of things just don't mean a whole lot but it's it's cool to me because that small detail is extremely unique and also i think it kind of shows that a lot of these alternate leagues outside of just the nfl they could turn people onto the game as well so that was his introduction to the game and he parlayed that love into a scholarship to one of the top college football programs in the country so check this out this man's last two full games of his college career both against sec opponents in very tight games that alabama happened to win he goes 10 receptions for 173 yards and a touchdown then the next week goes 13 receptions for 150 already thought to be a first round pick dude was just solidifying his draft stock so he gets to the sec championship game and through two quarters he's already caught five passes for 97 yards and a touchdown but then something goes wrong and dude goes down in the second quarter with a torn acl ends his college career right there so he goes through the excruciating rehab and after doing a thorough examination on his knee the houston texans end up selecting him in the second round one pick before david ajabo who was just covered the fact that they went back to back is pretty wild because they just have so much in common the nigerian background moved around to different countries as kids picked up a game a little later than most had to sit behind crazy amounts of talent in college for people who wasn't watching those programs closely just exploded onto the scene out of nowhere and then got hurt shortly before the biggest night of their entire lives and as a result had to watch three things no NFL draftee ever wants to see. They had to watch their potential first round pick status, millions of dollars on their first contract, and their entire rookie season completely slip away. And it's just pretty crazy that they slipped to pretty much the exact same spot in the 2022 NFL Draft. Granted, they were drafted to teams who are in completely different situations, but I actually like what I saw from Davis Mills last year. I do believe he's good enough to distribute the ball and, if nothing else, allow John Mechie to perform at least statistically. But of course, that's assuming he's still the quarterback for the 2023-2024 season when John Mechie comes back. So anyway, John Mechie worked and worked to build up that knee, not to mention everything else that goes into getting ready to play your first NFL season. And then he gets hit with the shock of his life. Less than one week after his 22nd birthday, this world-class athlete is diagnosed with acute promyelocytic leukemia, or APL. APL causes immature white blood cells to accumulate in your bone marrow. This causes a shortage of normal white and red blood cells in the body, which is exactly as bad as it sounds. But fortunately, this is considered to be the most curable form of adult leukemia and cure rates of 90% are now being reported, meaning nine out of 10 people are able to completely get rid of it and continue living a normal life. As a matter of fact, this is the same form of leukemia that Chuck Pagano had, if any of y'all remember that, former coach of the Colts. He was diagnosed back in 2012, went to battle with the beast and came out victorious. And so according to reports, the prospect for John Mechie to be able to do the exact same thing is actually even higher than what Chuck Pagano's chances were. Because first off, you got to remember that a full decade of medical advances have taken place since then. And of course, John Mechie is much younger. Again, he had just turned 22 when he found out about this. That got to be one of the worst birthday presents of all time. But either way, the Ricky will have to battle the deadly disease as opposed to battling NFL corners this fall. And credit to him for putting on a strong face, putting out a good statement. But you just know that when he's alone and has time to think, he's had to ask at least once like bro why me that said players like eric berry trent williams and james connor have all come back from different forms of the disease so maybe he can find some small level of comfort in the fact that he's not the first nfl player to deal with this but while he's not the first nfl player to deal with this he is the first player i can remember having to deal with it before he's even played a snap and you want to really know the craziest part this ain't even the first time he's had a potentially life-threatening condition to present itself 
during his football career. Not even his first rodeo, bro. Check this out, right? So when dude was just a freshman in high school, he took a hit to the chest and his heartbeat sped up and would not slow down. He was sent to get it checked out and doctors found out that he had an enlarged heart that was causing problems with his cardiac functions. Dude was 14 or 15 years old at the time and had recently moved to the US to pursue football. His entire family though was still back in Canada. So he was essentially by himself dealing with this. He ended up missing the remainder of his freshman season and had the condition twice as hard as everybody else else just to get the abnormality back at bay he overcame that as a teenager and now he can even draw from that experience to help guide him through this sometimes it's tough because it seems like the same people get tested over and over and over again but the dude is strong he'll pull through and hopefully go on to have a phenomenal nfl career so a couple months back i did a video on justin ross receiver out of clemson in that video i talked about how dude went from a first round projection to completely undrafted and that's the trend in this video every single one of these players at one point was considered a first round draft pick but while ajabo and mechie slid to the same spot in the second round justin ross just kept slipping and the man slipped all the way out of the damn draft entirely the drop off in money is significant when you go from a first round pick to a second round pick imagine going from a first round pick an undrafted free agent on top of that don't forget he was the man at clemson for a number of years but this was before the nil money came so he didn't get the clean up on that end and he didn't get the clean up on this end and i know he ain't sitting around crying over spilled milk like that was those opportunities that that stuff is gone but if you really want to try to feel like what this dude is up under like bro you know that gotta be tough you was really supposed to be eating with all of these dudes but now you over here with a pack of noodles and not only are the nfl players but now the college players they all eating steak and shrimp so yeah i'm pulling hard for dude to ball shake all the way back and then cash in down the line and get him a big contract bro like how could you not pull for dude now like i said i did do a full deep dive like right after he didn't get drafted so maybe a month or two ago now so i link that at the end if you want to get all the way into justin's story but let me give you the short version if this interests you and you don't know the whole version then you'll want to watch the long one you feel me so justin was actually born with a spinal condition and he essentially aggravated it for the first time during a spring practice when he was in college right after that dude went from being one of the most exciting young stars in the nation to basically an afterthought as he never got fully back to what he was before now with that said he has shown signs and glimpses so there is some hope that he could return to his former glory i mean fully and some doctors actually refused to clear him for contact he had to give multiple second opinions and many nfl teams hell it seemed like every nfl team just kind of saw that and took him off of their draft boards but he was picked up by the chiefs as an undrafted free agent pretty much immediately following the draft dude could potentially be the steal of the century if he can get anywhere close to his old form and this footage of him from chiefs otas definitely shows some glimpses keep in mind by the way this is a 6'4", 200 plus pound man making these cuts. Patrick Mahomes even raved about his ball skills, but the question will always be, will his body hold up? But unfortunately, he got even more bad news this past week. On top of the spine problems, Justin also had to have foot surgery, which ended his final college season. And apparently that surgery didn't turn out exactly the way they'd hoped as Justin's foot was still giving him pain during Chiefs OTAs. That's what's gonna keep him out for the full 2022 NFL season. Had he been able to remain healthy, there's really no reason to believe that he wouldn't have been able to carve out a role within this Chiefs receiving core. Of course, they just lost Tyreek Hill, they did draft Sky Moore, and they brought in Juju, but I can all but guarantee you that Andy Reid will find a way to use a healthy Justin Ross. Like, the dude's just too talented. Every player we discussed today has already been through a bunch. They just gotta endure for a little while longer and prepare themselves mentally and physically for what's essentially a red shirt year. David Ajabo, John Mechie, and Justin Ross are all gonna be interesting careers to watch unfold. I mean, how dope would it be if they could all overcome their setbacks and go on to do great things in the league? And how much would it suck if none of them could ever really get going? 
The challenges they face are laying the groundwork for three potentially amazing NFL stories. But always remember it's real people having to really live through this stuff. The real pain, real worries, and real doubt. There's about a million different variables and the odds are definitely stacked against you when it comes to living out these career mode like stories. But these are three that we should all keep an eye on. We watch for entertainment obviously. Why not get some motivation out of it while you're here? Why not root for people who are looking to overcome challenges? Just look at the video I did on potential hall of famer jimmy smith just recently he wasn't able to catch a pass for the first four years of his career and went on to put up hall of fame numbers because of that we know it's possible but we also know it's unlikely but if that lightning does happen to strike again this time we'll all have a front row seat